When you first fall, the holidays are real. They hit you super hard. I remember when I first fell, even a 48 hour lockdown, not even on a holiday, put me in tears. Six, seven years later, I could go a year straight in the cell through New Year's. I could land on a New Year's 2011, not come out of my cell past New Year's 2012 and not even shed one fucking tear. This was a problem though. The tears, the pain, the agony brought me closer to myself. Once I got too comfortable, even in the pen, I saw myself not growing as much. So I like the holidays, I like the pain, I like growth. So this is what I'm focused on during the holidays is to really feel it. I walk straight into it. But most people, they walk straight to that needle. They walk straight to the drugs. They walk straight to any, any fucking distraction they could get. More TV, zoned out, card playing, whatever. All I did my whole term was read and work out. That's all I did. And talk to people in this manner, an uplifting manner to create the assets around me so that I didn't have a bunch of liabilities I had to look out for. If I can make people around me better, make their energy better, I in turn make my life better. That's my whole reason for being a leader, my whole reason for coaching. Because I've been on massive lockdowns and I realized over time that I never ruined my own fucking day. Never. So I knew it was other people, but that's okay because I've had whack ass, lame ass negative energy in my life before, and I still continue till this day, but I own it really quickly as you should if people are around you and you know you're putting off that bitch ass energy. You just own it. You say, hey, I'm not in the right place right now. I'm going to come back. I'm going to collect myself, go work out or something. But the holidays in the pen are especially tough. About four years in, is when you finally adjust and you quit dreaming about the street, you quit thinking about the street. Every second that passes, you're thinking about the street. About four years in, I adjusted fully to prison life. I never thought it would happen. One time my homeboy, Matt Smith from IE, he told me, he said, he said, nah, like soon, I was like two years in and he's like, he's like, nah, soon you'll fully adjust to this shit and you'll get it. Like, you, you won't even be thinking about the street no more. You won't be thinking about your chick. You won't be thinking about your family. This will be your family. You will be living in here. And that's the facts. Four years in, everybody's living their life and you're happy that they are because you're a grown ass motherfucking man. And if you held on to that resentment, it would kill you. Resentment is basically like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. You just give love to those people. You love their life. You want the best for them. You keep it pushing because you got yourself that prison sentence. All I did was think about creating myself into the most fucking, the best product I could imagine. The whole time, I'm creating the best product I can imagine, acquiring what I admired so that I could get out and give it away. Give it to my family, give it to my friends so they could be proud of me. They could say, that's my fucking boy. He fucking loves me. Don't make the mistake of making people co-sign on your shot out ass that you didn't put no work in and then feeling some type of way about them talking about they changed. The fact is, is you change, you regress. Motherfuckers who keep it going forward, forward progress, they're consistently in an upward fucking inclination of life they don't want to be around that shit, but it's okay. Don't ever expect people to fucking understand you. They don't have to. Life don't have to. Life ain't fair, motherfucker. So on these holidays, I've been on lockdowns. One time I went on a lockdown on October 11th. We didn't come out. October 11th, 2011. We didn't come out till January 2012, 2013. So we didn't come out till January 2013. This was over 14 months from a riot. So the point is, is they came around during Christmas with the phone on wheels. The motherfucking phone was on wheels. They gave everybody five minutes. They gave everyone five minutes. Imagine this, you're missing your family. You've been down forever. You haven't left the cell from August 11th to Christmas now. It's been a few months. And you finally get that five minute call to your girl or your loved ones. And they're just all, they put it through. You see that they put phone time on. Like I saw my girl had put phone time on and it just made my heart. I didn't even have to talk to her. I didn't even want to talk to her. That's how crazy it is at this point when you're doing a massive term. You don't even want bad news. You just want them to know that you just want to know that they're still there that they love you and they're doing something for you. So if anybody in your life is doing time, just write them a letter, 
Put a little bit of phone time on here and there. Let them know that you still exist out there and you're still backing them. You don't have to be constantly breaking bread on their books, paying for their dope, putting money on their green dot card. Fuck all that shit. It actually has the adverse effect on creating a titty monster with straight tits. Talking about I did time like all these other motherfuckers talking about they did time with no tats and a bunch of titties. I don't even understand that shit. But anyways... If that's what you call a man, just realize soft men are born in soft regions and soft regions are created. You can't just go to the pen and be hard. You can still choose to be a bitch there too. So the point being is these holidays are rough until you adjust. I'm going to tell you the facts. When I got out and I got out right before Christmas in 17, it was harder for me to go to Christmas with my family than it would have been for me to eat my fucking tray and go sit on my rack and read my motherfucking book. This is the reality of it. It was harder. I wasn't used to it. Whatever we're not used to is difficult. So anyone who's thinking about doing a long ass stretch or thinking about living that penitentiary chances based life, realize you'll adjust both ways and it'll be painful both fucking ways. The biggest thing that you don't see on the holidays when people talk about penitentiary, the penitentiary, is them divorce packets. Them divorce packets start sliding during the holidays. Them chicks are over it. They get over it. When your chick been riding five years, she been riding seven years, she been riding two years, she been riding seven months. She gets around the holidays and our people on the street, they feel the real world more than we feel it in the pen. We're distracted in the pen. There's always fucking drama. This car's battling with that car. That fool's tripping. That fool's got a dope debt. That fool just got smashed. That fool needs to get smashed. There's always so much shit going on, so much drama, that you never have to fucking even focus on the outside world. And when you do, you usually just pop into a workout and not give a fuck and keep it moving. But the thing is, is the fucking point being is that you're putting more pain on your people. And any bitch-ass motherfucker who gets himself in the pen and expects people to be tripping on, is, is Wes okay? Is he good? Fuck you, man. You got I got my motherfucking self here. All I saw the pen as, as was an asset. I thought of this as making me so fucking strong. Watch who the fuck I become when I get out this motherfucker and nobody can stop me. Because the fact is, is your conduct, your character, your principles cannot be taken from you. The only time your life is taken from you is when your character is at fault. My character never went to fault, so nobody took anything from me. The only thing they can take from you is your conduct and your character. Once that shit goes out the window, it don't matter if you're on the streets or you're in the penitentiary. Your life's over. You cease to be you. You ain't even a motherfucking man no more. Watch that shit hit you like a ton of bricks. The only time out here when I experience pain is when I lose my character. When I come out of character to someone for some odd reason, that's the only time I feel pain. It's the same thing in the pen. It's the same thing anywhere. So if while you're in the pen, you're doing your time, you're sending love from your heart outwardly to your people on the street, you understand, you don't have resentment towards them. You know they got a life. You know you got yourself there. And you just don't hold back. You don't hold any of this bitch ass shit that people have nowadays. This, this fucking belief that people owe them shit. People have to do shit for them. That fucking resenting people for not being there and doing this and that. Nobody owes you motherfucking shit. Your parents birthed you. That's it, motherfucker. They hooked your ass up. What is this shit like? I, I used to see these dope fiend ass bitch ass motherfuckers in the pen where they'd be other cats other white boys would be like, oh, Sean's a good dude. I'm like, how the fuck is he a good dude? We were on lockdown and he's shooting his mom messages about, hey, pay evil that money, mom, or I'm going to get booked when we come off this lockdown about a dope debt. Motherfucker sweating his own mom for her hard-earned money because he's got a dope problem. That's bitch, dude. That's straight up. If you've ever done that, slap your motherfucking self. Call yourself a bitch. No conduct like that. I never needed shit when I was busted. My people who came to me to help me out is because they loved me. I never asked. They loved me because I had good conduct. They accepted that I made some mistakes because they were the type of people who made them before. But 99% of the time, I hustled my fucking ass off like I do on the street. 
2.45 wake up time, chasing a motherfucking vision, accomplishing goals, catching them W's from fucking the morning to night. This is how it's done. I see some clowns out my window. Just these grown ass baby bitch ass boys. Obviously on dope. Obviously thinking the world owes them shit. Obviously walking around like a fucking victim. Just fucking believing that they're fucking getting the short end of the stick. Motherfucker, the second you believe that shit, the second you focus on what you don't have, trust me, you're going to attract more of what you don't have. Focus on everything you can fucking do to be where the fuck you want to be. That's it. Don't doubt yourself. Trust your gut. Don't ever fucking think I can't pull this off. I never fucking do. Never. So the point being, on these lockdowns, during these fucking harsh situations in the pen, I saw them as strength. I fucking learned unconditional love in the pen. Unconditional love, the greatest lesson you could ever be taught. I learned in the fucking pen, and it was because people were treating me badly that I saw in my eyes. And but you better believe I cursed them in my head. Fuck this bitch. Motherfucker better write me. I swear to God when I see these motherfuckers and I'm pissing myself off. Now, months and months and months of doing this, I finally saw the error in my ways. And I just said, you know what? I fucking love you guys anyways. Let's skip to the end result. Fuck everything in between. Let's skip to the end result. Are you going to love this person when you see them? If they fucking take your apology, if, if they apologize to you and you're willing to accept it, are you going to move past it? Okay, well then fuck the apology. You don't even need it. Just love them. Just love fucking love them. Get yourself past all that pain. Anybody in your family, your ex, brothers, sisters, just anybody, just drop the resentment, move on with fucking life. This is why the holidays bring this out in the pen. People losing people, people falling off the team as they call it in the pen. That's my team. People not fucking hooking people up with their old fucking canteen money, put money on their books, J pay all that. I mean, this is the thing, like the pen is based on a bunch of selfish baby boys, man. That's why when they get out, they can't make it. Why do you think they go back? They ain't coming out thinking, hey, I'm gonna work super hard, be super selfless. I don't need shit. I just lived without shit for 10 years. I can continue that for another 10. That's the way I think about it. I won't even buy myself a pair of new shorts. The only shit I buy is an expense for my company. It's a business expense. I don't spend money on shit that isn't part of my living expense for my business and creating some generational wealth. We're gonna watch this happen. This is gonna be the principles I preach personified, the sacrifice, the long view, the not needing shit. Live like that, live selfless. The second you're about, you're getting in an argument with someone and you're thinking, but I feel this way, fuck you, you're a man, you don't feel no type of way. You just act fucking right. That's your people. Just love them. Just drop it. Just drop it. The point fucking being, I've said that five fucking times right now, because the point being is they're going to wheel that phone around. You're going to check. You're going to really not even want to talk to them. You're going to not even want to get letters from them. You're going to get a letter from them and you're just going to read the fucking really, the first thing that you like. Like, I love you, Wes. Boom. Okay. I don't want to see the rest. I don't want to fucking see it. I don't, I don't want to deal with it. So the point being... Be the best motherfucker now. You don't have to pay for it later. All this wisdom, the wisdom of the ages, these quotes that are passed on, the shit motherfuckers have been through. Only take advice from someone who've had the life that you want or has the life that you want. They've never been there. They've never done that. They ain't in the position you want to be in. They don't know how to fucking get you there. This is facts. Everything else is just a fucking hypothetical situation they're dropping on you. Some bullshit they passed down from somebody else. But it's okay. It's all okay. Get the fuck up. Earn them W's. Grind like a motherfucker. I want to see you guys all at the top. This is all about abundance. You can sit in the back. You could think from these videos, the penitentiary videos on here, that the holidays mean something, it's this and that. Every day's painful in the pen, and every day's not painful in the pen. It's just like out here. If you get your money, if you program right, if you do your thing, you're gonna feel good for four fucking hours. And if you wait three hours and then do it again, you're gonna feel good for another two hours. 
Probably going to have two hours of pain in your day where you think about shit that's out of your control. And that's where your growth occurs. So don't run from the fucking pain. See it as growth. I fucking love you guys. I fucking love you guys because what I do right here is I use you guys as accountability. I tell you guys who I'm going to be. I'm going to hold my word to you guys and I'm going to fucking win because I want you to win. Let's fucking get it.